What's up, Facebook? What's up, Instagram? I hope you all are having a fantastic day and wonderful start to your week. Today, I'm jumping in quickly to answer a specific question that a awesome rock star follower on social media asked me after one of last week's uh, informational segments, and that was, what are the consequences of under eating? And I really want to dive into the details here to help answer her question specifically and to provide you with as much knowledge as possible around this subject. Now, I'm making an assumption here that this question was asked in, to, in relation to wanting to diet or lose weight, maybe short term or at some point down the road. So I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind, on the forefront of your mind as I dive in this evening. So hands down, first and foremost, one of the consequences of under eating is well, you have a lack of fuel. I mean, a lack of fuel to your brain, to your muscles. It won't be uncommon to feel fatigued during the day, to suffer what seems like a continuous plateau in your training, and all in all, never quite feel like your well-being and energy are as high as they should be. This may lead you to pursue a few other reasons why you may be feeling run down. Do you have an underactive thyroid? Do you have any form of depression or things not going your way in life? When in reality, it might simply be you're under eating. Now, when I mean under eating, a lot of you may think that I mean, oh my goodness, he or she is eating in a calorie deficit, so they must be really lean and losing, losing, losing. Well, that is not necessarily the case. When you are under eating, this is not always, uh, manifested, this is not always manifest into weight loss. In fact, it may just manifest into steady weight maintenance and potentially slow gradual weight increase despite eating so few calories. And the major reason behind that is your metabolic rate is extremely dynamic or adaptable. What I mean by that is, let's say, for example, you're accustomed to eating 1,800 calories per day. Well, all of a sudden, you cut your calories down to 1,200, maybe intentionally or unintentionally, and unintentionally may come in the form of uh, stress around your life for some reason impacting your eating frequency, your calorie density, or your food choices. Regardless, you're eating significantly fewer calories that 600 calorie deficit slowly but surely eventually becomes your new maintenance or baseline intake. So what was once a 600 calorie deficit that sparked weight loss, well, now your body has adapted. It has prioritized conserving energy so that now you do, you no longer lose weight eating fewer calories, yet you may feel hungry, you feel fatigued, you have a chronic or consistent lack of energy. So with that said, you know, that is the reason why you may feel fatigued what feels like 24-7, which then manifests into a continuous plateau in your training. But now we can take that information and expand and go one step further. And the consequence of under eating you then may experience is simply a, a reduction, a chronic reduction in your metabolic rate a chronic reduction in thyroid hormone production, which heavily influences your metabolic rate, a chronic reduction in your thermic effect of food, a chronic reduction in the number of calories you burn during non-exercise activity, as well as structured formal exercise activity. The result, you are burning fewer calories during the day and you are unable to experience any positive change in your body composition, the weight on the scale, or in your performance because you are now chronically under fuel. As a result, your body wants to hold on to all the calories and all the body fat it does have. Your stored body fat is, you know, like your body's golden supply. It's last resort when it comes to fuel. And you've already released a quite a bit when you were adapting to that 600 calorie deficit. But now your body is in a constant state of feeling threatened or stressed. And it wants nothing to do with getting rid of that body fat any further. So your body is under fuel, it's underperforming, it's saving, saving, saving calories, and it is holding on to body fat for dear life. So, if you are in this position, yet you want to lose weight, well, first and foremost, you don't really have any food to take away from. You don't have much to work with, so to speak. And secondly, 
Fatigue is already high. Hunger is probably fairly frequent. If you try to cut food away, those two variables are only going to increase and increase quickly and rather exponentially so that you are feeling even worse, hungrier, lethargic, and not even able to muster up the willpower to get your butt in the gym. Now, I cannot tell you how common this situation is, and that being chronic underfueling in the in numerous people I have worked with over the past few years. And this comes to people who are already skinny, who are, you know, healthy, normal weight, even overweight or obese. They are simply under eating. And their biggest question or the biggest head scratch they have is, Paul, I want to lose weight. But you're telling me to eat more. It's very difficult for people, and I completely understand why, to wrap their head around that concept. Because they think eating less is what drives weight loss, but they are in a position where they don't have much to reduce from. They can't eat any uh, that much less, or else hunger and fatigue are going to skyrocket. And... It, it's such a difficult concept that this is one of the uh, driving forces that sends people into a yo-yo dieting tailspin because they can't grasp the fact that they need to bring their food up. And one of my biggest recommendations to cope with that is to stop focusing on that scale number. If you want to put yourself in a position to lose weight successfully, but you're currently significantly under eating, you've got to get rid of the scale. I mean, literally to the point to removing the scale from your house may be the best bet for you. And instead, you need to be very diligent and keen on paying attention to factors such as your energy during the day, both in the morning or during your workout or at the end of a long day, your general well-being, your relationship with food, and how you ultimately feel about your body, your energy, and yourself as you move throughout the day. What most of you are going to realize is that if you are, if you start to become really in tune with your body and how you're feeling and that mind-body connection, you're going to feel that as you begin eat, increasing your ta- uh, baseline calorie intake, you feel a little better. You have a little more energy. You start to set some new PRs in the gym. You start to smile a little more. And all of a sudden, while these positive changes are taking place, your metabolic rate is slowly coming up. Your resting energy expenditure, your non-exercise activity expenditure, the amount of calories you burn during the day starts to come back up. And you start smiling more. You have more energy. You start performing better. And it gives you the freedom to actually increase calories even more. So within a three, four, five-month period, yes, absolutely that long, now all of a sudden you might be eating 600, 800, 900 calories more. And when you go to step on the scale, you might be within a couple pounds of your previous weight. And that's freaking awesome. But it takes time. And it takes a conscious daily effort to stop focusing on the scale. But if you can do that, the value and benefits you will experience are absolutely phenomenal and indescribable. So I hope that answers your specific question when it comes to the chronic consequences of under eating, then with a little icing on the top of how to transition away from that. Now looking at a comment, Sean says, Intake with RP template, she had lost 20 pounds in eight weeks. Oh, very cool. I'm glad you've seen that so many times, Sean. That's outstanding. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, the science is there. The experience is there. The people's hard work, positivity, and patience and persistence are all there as walking examples of what it takes to finally break free of this. Whoops, Instagram, I lost you. Back. Uh, chronic underfueling to put yourself in a position to finally be ready to tackle a successful diet. Questions, comments, concerns, I would love to know what I can answer for you, what questions you have, what thoughts or concepts you're pondering. I mean, this was a question that was directly posted to me just last week. I'd love to answer your specific question. Comment below, Facebook, I mean, Facebook, send me a message, Instagram, send me a direct message. With that said, start eating. Stop underfueling and putting yourself in such a disadvantageous position. Don't be afraid of food. Don't be afraid of the scale. Food is fuel. The scale is sometimes just worthless. Throw it out. Get rid of it. Stop being so in tune with it. Get yourself some food this evening. Enjoy the rest of your night. And I will see you Thursday evening, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, to talk about several 
uh, options you have to increase your hydration intake throughout the day. It's going to be a rapid fire brainstorm session. Some of these ideas may seem that you're already implementing other ideas. You're going to be like, boom, mind blown. I'm implementing that tomorrow. Enjoy your Tuesday. I'll see you Thursday.